Hey everybody, welcome again to Challenge Athletes Live. My name is Bob Babbitt. Our guests today, JW and Katie Marino, joining us from back east. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Good. Hey, so um, Katie, tell me a little bit about your backstory. Uh, we're talking 2009, a drunk driver cuts, comes across the center line and hits you head on. Talk a little bit about just that specific moment and, and how that changed your life. Well, I was competitive athlete in college, so I ran for ETSU. And so at that moment, both of my legs were crushed and other, my, um, my ribs and collarbones. Um, so it took me about eight months to learn to walk again um, with two legs. But ultimately, my right ankle um, was not repairable. So we ended up having to have it amputated in 2017. And how many operations did you deal with from between 2009 to 2017? 21. Oh my God, 21 operations. And I'm sure there was a point where you you felt this is never going to get better. And you, you were, I'm sure you're dealing with a lot of pain. Were there points where you just didn't know if you were ever going to be able to live a full life again? Yes. And I mean, I have, we, well, we have, a seven-year-old, but at the time I chose to have the amputation was in 2017, but I had contemplated it in 2013, um, just researching all the different options, what would give me the best quality of life, would it be a fusion, would it be a total ankle replacement, or would it ultimately be the amputation, um, so that way I could stop having so many surgeries and start living my life again with my son. Well, and especially you want to go play soccer with your son. You want to run around. And yeah. it was, was, it, was it another mom who was an amputee who finally made you see that, you know what, this could be better? Yes. Um, at, at my clinic that I currently work at now, Victory OMP, they introduced me to um, a mom who was in a similar situation. Um, she was also crushed. And she said, you know, I get out there and play basketball with my kids. At that point, I, I was doing good to walk around Walmart. So it changed um, everything. It was life changing. And I, I am more whole now than I was with my leg, with my leg that was hurt. And, and I'm sure at some point you didn't ever believe that would be possible. No. And, and I, I, like now I have zero pain where before I lived in chronic pain. So it is truly a blessing to to get to live my life and run and um, and then I met JW and we we challenge each other a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, and talk a little bit about here you go JW three sport uh, all star athlete high school army veteran professional bull rider. Okay, when we talk about crazy, I, I, a lot of my buddies do this thing called the Ironman triathlon. That's like a cocktail weenie compared to being a bull rider. What the hell? Who, whose idea was it for you? When somebody said, hey, why don't you get on that thing and it's going to jump up and down and try to kill you. And you were like, that's a hell of an idea. Well, it was, it was actually done on a dare. And, of course it was. <laughs> uh, at the time I was riding bucking horses. Uh, I've been riding bucking horses since I, you know, I've been riding horses since I was knee high or grasshopper. And, um, I did it on a dare. I said, how hard can it be? Got my first one and rode it full eight seconds. I'm like, that was easy. And it made my buddy mad because he's like, that's not right. He said, you know, but so I got more involved in it and ended up riding professionally for nine, nine years. I did a total 15 years on the circuit. I rode Saddle Bronx, uh, Bulls. Uh, my last bull was in September of 99. Uh, I rode him to the whistle, went to jump off, and it was just a freak accident. I took a horn right above the right temple and had to have seven hours of emergency brain surgery. And then I took a year and a half off to get well. And then my first bucking horse back, I got knocked out in the chute and sat back for about 30 days thinking, maybe that's a sign saying I need to stay away from the rough stock and stick to the timed in event. And I thought, no, the bull, I had to end it on the bull's terms. I'm not ending it on the Bronx terms. 
30 days later, I ended up in another rodeo and drew the same horse that knocked me out a month before, rode her for 80 months and won the buckle and continued to ride bucking horses for four more years. I'm sure there's a whole list of injuries that you got from yeah, rodeo. I, uh, I broke my knee in 96 on a bareback horse, tore the meniscus, calf open. Um, not really major. I broke uh, I broke a bone in my wrist, bronch riding. I broke my ankle, got hung up riding, had to have eight plate, uh, eight inch plate and eight screws put in it. That was three months to the date when I broke my knee. I went, I got, I went back too soon. Third bull back, I got hung up, got stepped on and, and broke it in two places. And then kind of slacked off in 96, thinking I need to let my body heal a little bit. Went back at it hard in 97, was back to riding bucking horses and bulls. And then I got more involved in team roping and ended up calf roping as well. And I was also a bullfighter as well. So Wait, wait, you were fighting bulls too? Yeah, I was a uh, rodeo clown. Basically, basically we call we call ourselves the bull riders guardian angel. We're the ones that take the hits when they get thrown off. And, you know, we always had a meeting before a bull riding or a rodeo, me and the other couple of buddies of mine I fought with. And we told the bull riders, said, look, if you hit the ground and we know you're not hurt and you're gallivanting getting to the arena, we're going to stand out of the way and let him get you. If we trying to get out, we'll step in front of him and help you. I'm not taking an ivory enema for your dumbness. <laughs> so. <laughs> when, at some point, you went in for a knee replacement. Talk right. a little uh, bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, so what had happened in rodeo when I was in 96, in rodeo, I kept injuring the same knee. It seemed like I never could. It was always my left side. It was never the right side. So I ended up having screws put in. And then I tore the meniscus. And then in 2004, I had an osteotomy. That's where they went in and cut the knee and separated it and moved it three inches in or six inches inward and put a 12 inch plate and 12 screws in it. And uh, Orthopedic of the Rockies, who specializes in sports injuries, is one that did it. And uh, I ended up injuring it in October of 08. Vanderbilt said that the plate and screws was causing all the pain in my knee. I'm like, no, you take that away. You're taking away my support. So I ended up taking away, long story short, I ended up having a knee replacement. Got it in July of 2015. I had nothing but problems. They gave me way too big of a knee replacement. They split the femur, split the tibula. The knee was coming loose, locking up, metal shavings in my bloodstream. I had an infection setting in. So then you had you became an amputee in 2016. Yeah, May of 2016. When did you guys meet? Uh, September of 2018. And, and what did you think, Katie, when you first met this guy? And where'd you guys meet? Did you meet at one of our amputee and one of our OSER amputee running clinics? No, we met. Um, <clears throat> he actually came in for a leg, and um, I noticed he was a runner because his leg w looks like a runner. And, and I was like, do you run? And here I am two months in about ready to get my running blade. And I'm like, I'm like, do you run? And he's like, well, I used to before my amputation. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he was like, well, let's, you know, I was thinking about going skydiving and I was like, here's a guy that's, you know, kind of interesting, likes to live life, but, you know, doesn't let him get in the way. And so um, a few months later, we, we started talking and then we were married pretty much instantly. So you guys, in terms of those amputee running clinics, the see the OSER amputee running clinics, how important were those for both of you guys? I didn't really, I went with her. She was in, you know, she was signed up for it. <clears throat> I didn't have a running blade at the time and the socket I was in at the time was causing a lot of pain. So I kind of watched a lot of it and, caught on what people were doing. I watched her a lot and from watching it, watching the group that were just learning to run to the advanced was amazing to watch with these kids that were learning how to run. By the end of the day, they were actually running like they'd been running for a while. It was a really neat deal to watch. I, I didn't get to uh, participate in it, but I was there for Katie and cheered her on and she did an awesome job in the the people that were in Nashville that did the clinic, they were they were awesome people. Real nice, real nice guys, nice ladies. 
Um, and I kept getting asked, why aren't you competing? I'm like, well, I don't have a running blade. And I took my, I took my socket off and showed them. They're like, oh, I was just in a lot of pain. Well, I tell you, for, for me, um, after my, my, after my amputation, um, I ended up being laid off from my job. And so my clinic asked me if I wanted to come work as a patient liaison there. So I said, sure. And so at that point, I didn't realize that there's a lot of people who have cardiovascular disease that have amputations. So I was surrounded in a small community by a lot of older people um, who, who may not have been as active as they would like to be. Um, so going to that clinic down in Nashville was the first time I was surrounded by people my age and younger and it was like so incredible to be able to feel like I wasn't alone. Yeah. And there was other people striving to be active and and um and it was competitive. So it put me back in a competitive because who have I, you know, I'm in Johnson City, Tennessee. There's no one to be competitive with, you know, except for myself. And so it was nice to have you know, and learn some of the stuff that, you know, the Paralympians do that help them prepare. And it was simple stuff that we used to do in college that it had been 10 years since I ran. So I totally forgot, you know, yeah. side to sides are really important for your hips and your running, right? So it was, it was an incredible experience. Our son came um, he enjoyed, of course, playing with all the other kids, and I think it's really important um, when you get all those athletes together, just um, the passion and positivity that you bring home to you, with you, to your community, that, hey, you know, anything's possible, and there's a million of us out there who are beating the odds every day, so... Love it. Sorry. And, no, no, that's great. And and, and so you're at, at Victory um, Orthotic and Prosthetic. Is that where you're working? Yes. And what yes. do you do? So I am um, a patient liaison there. So I pretty much hold a patient's hand from the time they have an amputation. Um, actually, I would say forever, but until they walk again um, and just kind of be there for them throughout that process and um, let them know that there's someone you know that's been through something very similar like they have well you have street cred right when they come in and you're able to say i was hit head on i've been dealing with uh, it took me 10 years basically before i got a prosthetic leg and it's the greatest thing that ever happened speaking of that jw you just got a grant 2020 grant for an oser cheetah knee uh, yes that, that's pretty uh, cool yeah, it's, uh, I'm still learning, still doing it. Uh, my, line, my liners will be here in the next couple of days, some other ones that keep splitting in one spot. So when I run on the running blade where they're splitting, it's hitting that distal bone. So I ran last week, did my first half, full half mile without stopping last week. And I've been working, the goal is every week to add a quarter mile to, you know, my goal is to get back up to where I can go run another 5K. Uh, so uh, so you're getting ready for 5k well i want to i want to get to the point where i can run a 5k with my running blade i've been competing with uh riding a hand cycle uh yep. riding a hand cycle april of last year and for the first few days i rode it i'm like i don't know if this is for me and the more i rode it the more i enjoyed it i went and entered my first marathon in february for the covid and ended up winning my first marathon on <laughs> Went to a different bike in April, and the fastest I could do in a mile on the other one was 330, 335. I'm down. The fastest I've done so far on this one's been 227. So you're both – you're doing hand cycling and you're running. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to I'm, – I'm, I was looking forward to coming to Challenge Athletes Foundation thing in October. I was so looking forward to that, and I kept pounding Travis. You still have it. You still have it. You still have it. So I was so ready to come, but then – COVID, everything yeah. happened. So uh, I'm in the gym seven days a week lifting, and uh, my goal is to go to Tokyo next year. Well, and and we and 
know how important CAF has been in our lives. Yeah. Um, and how um, I wouldn't have got to beat him two weeks ago in a race <laughs> that he challenged wait. me to. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Katie took you down, JW. I love that. That was the that was the fastest I've run. I haven't been pushing myself very hard. I said, give me another month and it'll be on. <laughs> So we decided, you know, like, what could we do to help you guys, you know, you know, raise money so that other people can get a gift of hope in their That's life. That's the cause. And so we, we're going to do, or JW's going to ride five cities in five days with some other CIF athletes um, to raise money for you guys, because we wouldn't be here without you guys. Uh, I love what you what you guys are doing, and so you guys will be part of our our community challenge. You're going to be doing some yeah, miles yeah. and raising some money. Yeah, love we're that. Calling it, we're calling it miles for mobility. We're going to ride Memphis, Nashville, Chattanooga, and end it here in Johnson City. And one of the guys that lives down the road from me, Fang Grog, he's a CAF recipient, Operation Rebound side, and he's riding it with me. And then the other guy that lives in South Carolina, he's coming in from South Carolina and do the whole week with us. He was a CAF recipient when he first came paralyzed from, he used to be, he used to race motorcycles. So and he loves riding the hand cycles. So he's going to come up. We got a couple other that might do a city here and a city there. But right now there's three of us that are doing every single city together. How many, how many miles are you thinking? Well, what we're doing, we're doing probably 10 to 20 miles outside the city and coming in and we're going to ride by the VA, stop the VA, probably Children's Hospital. Uh, <clears throat> we're working on the Compass Rehabilitation uh, uh, Rehab Places, so people can see, you know, we all have disabilities. We're out here doing raising money to help you uh, to live a dream, of getting the sporting equipment through Challenge Athlete Foundation. We've been spreading the word about the Operation Rebound side. Uh, several people I've talked to in law enforcement, they're like, "Oh my, we." Or heard anything like that and I explained to them insurance companies only pay for enough to get you mobile again they're not going right. to pay for sporting equipment right I said you know my running blade if it wasn't from the challenge athletes foundation I wouldn't be able to up upright and running again and the main reason why I wanted a running blade so I could be upright playing basketball again because that was my sport um, my dream job is a college basketball coach I that's how it. much I know about the game and I actually coached my, for the first time, I coached this year, first and second graders, and more than half the team had never played the game before, and we went undefeated. You guys are amazing. They listened to the fundamentals and, you know, and listened how to play the game. And I made it enjoyable, but, you know, I never yelled at the kids for doing something wrong. But I said, if you listen to me, I'll teach you the fundamentals. Like one guy, one kid had been playing two years, he do it and talk the proper way how to play defense. And I said, I'll show you an easy trick. And he's like, I never knew that. You know, so, and I enjoyed coaching this year. And we went, we played, I think, 10 games. And we didn't lose one game this year. I love and The that. other team, the yeah. other teams where we played, they're like, what are you doing to your teams that are so good? I said, they listen. I said, <laughs> you know, I teach them fundamentals. I just don't put them on the court and go, okay, shoot the ball. I made, you know, in practice, we went fun. We did fundamentals every single week. And that's great. And they, and they all picked up on it. And they, they were like sponges. They learned and learned and learned. And her son played for the first time. And he started scoring baskets the last two games of the season. You know, he was listening. They were all listening. But, you know, that's, that's my sport. And I love basketball. I just, I absolutely love the game of basketball. You got to check out some of our wheelchair basketball players. We've got some. Yeah, I, yeah. Some video clinics up there. It's, it's yeah. really amazing. And, and so, Katie, for you, I can tell that you're more of, than a liaison at uh, Victory O&P, that you become immersed in, in people's lives. How important has that been for you? Because sometimes when you help others, it helps you as well. Yeah. It, um, you know, we've cried together a lot with patients. Um, we've laughed and we've celebrated. So it's been, you know, the whole line of emotions that you go through when you have a life-changing event. Um, but it is, um, 
I sold pharmaceuticals. I sold medical sales before this. Um, but there is nothing like being there for someone. And sometimes no, some of these people don't have anybody else that's there for them. So, you know, they really, really need someone to just call and check on them and say, hey, are you okay? Yes, phantom pain is real but it will, you know, get better, sure. you know, just reassuring them <clears throat> that life will get to a new normal. Hey, you guys, thank you so much for taking time and coming on Challenge Athletes Live. Such a pleasure to get to meet both of you, JW and Katie Marino. You guys are the best. Thanks so much for taking time. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye.